Welcome to our next video, Recommended Home Assistant Add-ons. Add-ons are small programs that extend Home Assistant by adding functionality or an integration. In this video we will install a number of add-ons recommended for Home Assistant installations. First we will install the file editor which allows you to edit configuration files from within the browser. Add-ons are installed from the add-on store. To get to this, click on Configuration. From here, select the Add-ons, Backups and Supervisor menu option. From this screen, click on Add-on Store. You'll be presented with a number of add-ons, both official and community. Click on File Editor. A screen will show details of the add-on. For each add-on, there will be a documentation page and it is a good idea to read this before installing an add-on for any important information or prerequisites. Click on the install button. When the install is complete, you'll be presented with a number of options. Start on boot means the add-on will always be started. Watchdog means the add-on will be restarted if it crashes. Show in sidebar adds a menu option on the left of the screen that goes directly to the add-on. When you're ready, click Start. To use the add-on, click Open Web UI. The add-on will launch. To open a file, click the folder icon. This will bring up a list of files. We'll use configuration.yaml as this is the central config file for Home Assistant. You can click away from the page to close. As we selected Show in Sidebar, we can reopen File Editor by clicking the File Editor option on the left. The add-on will open where you left it. Next, Samba Share. This shares folders over your network so that other devices can view them. Click on the Add-on Store. Click Samba Share. Remember to check the documentation for any information that you may need to know. To install, click Install. As this is a server function, we want to keep this running, so enable the watchdog. Click Start. The add-on tells us that a password is missing in the configuration. Click Edit Config to go there. Change the null value from the password option to a password. This is what you'll be using to log on when browsing to the share, so remember what it is. Click Save. You can now start the add-on again. Click Info to return to the controls and click Start. To use the add-on, browse to the network from a device on the same network. You'll see a device with the name of your Home Assistant instance. Double click to open it. You'll be prompted for a username and password. Unless you've changed it, the username is Home Assistant. The password is what you set earlier. Click OK. You'll now see a number of folders which you should be able to access. As an example, browse to the config folder. You'll see a number of configuration files. Use the editor of your choice to edit these files and save them. Crony is a network time server. This provides the current time to devices on your network, such as cameras. To install, click Crony. Click Install. As we want this running all the time, enable the watchdog. Click Start. Crony will run fine without configuring. However, if you wish to change options, such as the NTP server it's getting the time from, then it can be changed in the Configuration tab. Studio Code Server provides a rich editing experience within the browser. To install, 
Click Studio Code Server. Click Install. We want this to run at all times, so enable the watchdog and show in sidebar. Click Start. Click Open Web UI. You'll be presented with the Visual Studio Style Editor. If you click on a file, you'll see it's opened an enriched text editor. We'll cover more about the various editors in a future video. Next is InfluxDB. This is a database server used for logging data from sensors. To install, click InfluxDB. Click Install. Enable the watchdog. Click Start. Click Open UI to check the add-on opens correctly. We will cover how to use InfluxDB and in Grafana in a future video. Grafana is a dashboard add-on that presents data in a number of visual formats. To install, click Grafana. Click Install. Enable the watchdog and show in sidebar. Click on Start. Then open UI. Again, we will cover Grafana in a future video. Node Red allows you to create automations using a drag and drop visual editor. To install, click Node Red. Click Install. Enable the watchdog and show in sidebar. Check the configuration and documentation. You'll see it advises you that you need to set the credential secret in the config. This is just a password. Enter this between the quotes. Click Start. Then check the log tab. Note the red text lower down the file. This advises that SSL is enabled but no certificate exists. To fix this, go to the configuration file, find the SSL setting, then change this from true to false. Click save. You'll be asked if you want to restart. Click restart add-on.
click Open UI. Node-RED will now start up. This is a powerful drag and drop automation editor which needs a video series on its own, so I'll cover how to use this in a future video. Terminal allows SSH connections to Home Assistant using the browser. As this is an advanced function, we need to switch on advanced mode from the user profile. Click on your name, then scroll down until you see advanced mode. Click the switch to turn it on. Then go back to the add-on store. You'll now see a few more add-ons are present. One of these is SSH and Web Terminal, not the similarly named Terminal and SSH. Click on this. Then click Install. Again, we want this running all the time, so enable the watchdog. There's an auto update function. Enable this to let the add-on keep itself up to date. Finally, show in sidebar. Check the configuration and documentation. A username and password needs to be set. Username is already set by default as HASIO. Change this if you need to. Enter a password and click Save. Go back to the Info tab and click Start. Click Open UI and you'll be presented with the terminal. From here you can enter normal Linux commands. As an example, I'll list the directory with ls. Thank you for watching. I will cover a few of these add ons in future videos. If you'd like to see these, please subscribe. If you like the video, please click on the like button.